Oh, listen, let, 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 let's be honest here. Um, this is the most torturous, hardest, toughest experience I've ever had to endure in my life. But it's also something that's got to be done. We've took 60 odd people out of doorways. One person died before we opened in December, and now none have died to my knowledge since. I'm not saying we saved lives, but what I am saying is we certainly helped. Hello, you all right? Yo! Peace and love! You all right, mate? Hey, fella. Hello, love. If everyone said hello to every person who walked past in the day, the world would be a better place. Imagine it. Everyone walking past saying hello, shaking hands with each other and being happy and helping each other out. When I was in my doorway, no one spoke to me at first, and I come out there and start to sing and dance with them. You only need to walk around Liverpool to see how big a problem rough sleeping and begging has become. At the same time, like in other cities, you are confronted everywhere with the signs of a high-end property boom. This winter in Liverpool, the two worlds collided. Lawrence Kenwright made his name and his fortune taking listed buildings that are derelict and turning them into luxury hotels. When I see an old list of building that's fallen down, I want to save it. It's amazing, no one. I'd sit it within there, yeah. so it's not touching any walls, so it's no. not part of the heritage, no issue whatsoever. It's just a labyrinth of detail where developers fear to tread. No one else is trying to jump into what we do. I'm sure they will in the end, but hopefully we'll have all the buildings by then. <laughs> Could be a good day today. Four deals. <laughs> Five deals. <laughs> we bought a building called Kingsway House, and they were creating a crack den in the roof. So in total, there's about 16 of them that we were throwing out pretty much on a daily basis. And it started to become a bit of a joke. Hiya, John, can you please? Oh, yeah, I know the score. I'm going to go. You know, so it was like one day, OK, we're going to stop that now. You just go through those doors. Here's your bed, here's your bedding, and here's your food. I never open the doors, and I have to be honest here, with the thought of I'm going to save lives. I open the doors actually from a corporate business strategy to stop them from breaking in and smashing windows. Uh, but then when I start speaking to them, I'm going to see them hugging radiators because they were that cold. And you think, oh my God, I, I can't walk away from these guys. This, this is, this is, I didn't realize this happened. Remember? Yeah. And it was freezing cold that night. And I looked at them and thought, oh Jesus Christ. I was mortified that I'm, I'm buying gifts and presents and living this lifestyle um, and, and these people haven't even got food to eat. So the first day it was 16, then it was 32, then it ended up being 80 plus with 90% of them being mental health issues with the cocktail of drugs thrown in, it was just anarchy. Can you sign in please? Can you sign in Good. Do you know what? I woke up this morning and I never felt so happy in all my life, you know. I think change, things have changed, like, and every day now, I'm going to be a better person than I was yesterday. This is my quarters. All my suits and that. Poodle, guard dog. <laughs> <laughs> These are our guests, all our friends. I love each and every one of these homeless people. I like my children, I just love them. Russia, Slovakia, this is my country. I've never been to Poland. When you first come in, you prove yourself, sort of, and you move up the ladder. Ryan, and you rock the sacks or drag your bottoms. I don't know, I'll have a look when I get in, lads. It makes you feel more confident, more like wanted than that. How did you end up actually on the streets? I was taking drugs and suffering with depression. I missed a few appointments at uh, the Dole and I, and I got sanctioned and it stopped me housing benefit. And then I just ended up on the street. I was a hippie working in the passport office. <laughs> it was dead end. I had all this energy to give to the city, but I'm stuck behind the computer desk. I just happened to sit down by the passport office and David was walking past. As soon as he shook my hands, we became the best of friends and I knew by that shake of his hands, that to be something good there. I love it. love that lad. That's love. That's good. You thank me so. That's Once you get this love in your system, man, it's just a brilliant feeling. <laughs> it's good, isn't it?
David began helping Brian on the streets. They approached Lawrence, who was having some trouble with Kingsway House. Lawrence offered David the job of manager, and he quit his job at the passport office. When we did open the doors, there was human feces in the corner, there was, there was needles. So I would, the first thing I'd do was come in, clean the ship, pick the needles up, and then told the lads, now you do it. Then straight away, they've seen me do it, you do it. Come on, mate. I'm waking you up. It's not a doss house, it's a refuge. The old idea of this is to get some structure in place. We want to uplift spirits. I'm a law student. I'll be going into court with someone next week to do, be like a character reference for them because we're hoping to get them a rehabilitation order instead of them just going to prison because he's been in and out of prison all of his life. A lot of people do want to help. They just don't know how to. But now we've broke past that barrier and we've created the spot so people can come and help. I had a bit of a mad childhood. So it was a bit of a, a, bit of a shit childhood, right? My mum and dad split up when I was 10, getting kicked out when I was 13. Just breathe through your nose, breathe out through your nose, let yourself go with it. I got kicked out of one of them care homes, went to another one. And it's just been that circle ever since. Jail, streets, jail, streets, jail, streets. It's hard to find people you can put your trust in when you're in this situation. So when you do find them, it's, it's nice, like, it's rare, though. Me, I, I take a lot to switch off. And there's, like, words with meditation, yeah, you're in a boat. You're going to your place, but I'm thinking, well, I'm in this boat, I can't swim. I fall out of this boat, <laughs> I'm gonna drown. Oh, it's mad. Kingsway House has been attracting homeless people and volunteers from across Liverpool. But there's a cloud hanging over the shelter. It has also drawn the attention of the authorities. We have the fire brigade, health and safety, building control, you name it. I've had the police come in. Every single time that we got back onto the council and we said we have an issue here, it's just been a closed door. It's a little bit like they're trying to close us down without actually showing the hands, if that makes sense. To prove their worth to the council and the people of Liverpool, the guests of Kingsway House have begun going out to clean the streets. It's infectious. I feel like I've got to go there. People come in, the first thing you see is they hug each other. And I just sit back and I look and I go, oh my God, this is amazing, you know. I'm finding myself hugging everyone now, which is really weird, you know. It doesn't matter who you are in this world, as long as you've got love in your heart. Everyone happy, that's all we want. Happy smiling faces on the street, boys. Let's make Liverpool happy. I mean, how many homeless people go round in a community and start cleaning up the streets? Where does that happen? We're going to clean this gorgeous sign out and make it look boss. Guys, Drop the bottle <laughs> and come and join us, lads. <laughs> we love it. We love this city. It's part of the station which the council's not responsible for cleaning. What we want to do is show what we can do. We'll fill the gap. Yeah. Needles, cucumber pots for the smack and the crack. This is the bleak side of reality, you know. Next up on the cleaning tour is the town hall, and it seems Lawrence wants to make a point. This is, this is my gig. We met up with the council on Tuesday. They're not happy with what we said, which we said that people are taking drugs on site, and they're going to inform the police. Like it's our fault, like, you know, all we're doing is, is trying to make the best of a bad situation. That's all we're doing. No, I'm enjoying myself. You can't have to do a job. No, I want Joe to see me. <laughs> <laughs> now, back home, yeah. After a hard day, I hope to be cleaning. <laughs> we love this place. So if you're listening, council, please, they keep us open. 
We need it. The people need it. A date has now been set for the end of the shelter. Lawrence has made an agreement with the council that it will close at the end of the month. When this goes, I'll be up in Oakland and early well. I've been through the hostel system since I was 16, but I, I got bullied in them. How did the other hostels treat you? You get moved from pillar to post. I've had enough of that, you know what I mean? My mum's on the drugs and that. My dad's dead. I'm your dad? I know. Stepdad, aren't you? <laughs> at least someone is, at least someone's. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Um, it's our jewelry now again. It's our jewels. <laughs> <laughs> Big smile, come on. <laughs> 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 I can't help it, she makes me cry. You've got me. You've got me and no one else. You've got She's me. She's always made me cry. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we've got to stay open. Yeah. Yeah. You can't close. It's now two weeks until Kingsway House is due to close. Lawrence is going for a meeting with the council, who've promised to find space for the roughly 35 remaining guests. But the problem is, the ones that we have are the ones that have come through the cracks anyway. Can they cope with this influx of new bodies coming in? And I don't think they can. And I don't think many of our guests want to go there anyway, although we're, we're saying they must go. The other problem is that new people keep arriving. Have you worked before, Richard? OK. Nine o'clock this morning, I get a phone call. There's a young couple asleep in our doorway. They're absolutely soaked to the skin. They've only just arrived, so we get them towels, we get them dry clothes. What's your name, mate? Julian. Julian. Yeah, I'm new here. If it wasn't for this place, I don't know what I'd do. I'd be sleeping on the street. There's not many opportunities out there for young people like myself who travel from the city to city finding work. Because you haven't got Liverpool connections, you couldn't help you? That's correct, yeah. I said they couldn't help me. We have everyone here. You're all welcome. When I first came here, I was using six bags of heroin and six bags of crack a day. I am now using a bag of heroin and a bag of crack a day. So, for me, this has helped me no end. That was just, they've not looked on us as second-class citizens. They've not looked at us as well. They're junkies, then. Let, let's, you know, distance ourselves from that, yeah? With this many vulnerable people in one place, the mood can occasionally turn very quickly. Stop my face. Who? That one there? These two. Loonies. Oh. Got a kick. Oh, Only a scratch. Nothing, buddy. Do you need any medical care? No. No, you're okay. You don't make sure, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to marry you in my next life. <laughs> your next life. What about this one? Too old, now. <laughs> Aren't you? Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> Come on, Jay. When things have calmed down, Brian decides to take us on something of a pilgrimage. Right there, fella. Go. This is my home here. This is where I lived for seven and a half months. Hello, love. So what in a nutshell did you learn here, then? I learned respect for people and to respect for myself and um, love. How to love people. Getting love back and this is where the person met David. See what happens. <laughs> You get what you receive, and that's it, you know, like, yeah. whatever you give, you get back. Sure. I know, you're a main man, I can say. I can feel another song coming on. Walk on, to a star, with hope in your heart. I don't love this. <laughs> Should we go now, then? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go on, there. <laughs> One day! One day! <laughs> of 
have come to see Lawrence speak at an event celebrating the success of his company, Signature Living. Mr. Lawrence Kenwright. Lawrence is now straddling two worlds, and the tensions between them are coming to a head. I was just going to say, I think it's incredible what you're doing with Queensway House. Is there a plan for what happens at the end of February? We've got some criticism, but it has, has been a PR play. It never has been. And I have had a high ranking police officer come in and say, if anyone dies within uh, Kingsway House, you will be done from court of manslaughter. And I thought, wow, you know, uh, community's really tight. And I, it breaks my heart to think that, that we're not going to bring that up. I come back with a week to go before the shelter is due to close, and just when the freezing weather is about to arrive. An outreach worker from the council is here to help find the remaining guests alternative accommodation. We've got a few uh, options for a few people. Uh, is that until, a temporary B&B? Until permanent accommodation is found. Yeah, what's going on? What's the latest? I don't know, really. It was the first time I'd seen Brian lost for words. Very emotional. Very sad, I know. Been amazing. He's an amazing man. Am I? They've just offered me um, a room <coughs> at a hostel in Smith Down Road. He said, Would you like to come and look at it? I said, Yeah, yeah, I'll come look. But I just said to someone, I said, well, Will you bring me back here after I've looked at it? No, you'll have to stay there. I said, but what about all my stuff here? I'll bring it all now, but what if I don't like the place? Then I'm stuck then. I just said to him, I said, you know what, I said, I keep me, I'll go back on the streets, man. I've just got used to these people around me. All we've heard is, this is family now. We're family, we're family, we're family. And now they're trying to take me away from my family. And that's all that's ever happened to me since I was a kid. I've been took away. I'd like to see this out to the end. I wanted to know from the council why Kingsway House had to close. But when I finally meet Mayor Joe Anderson, I'm in for a surprise. Can I clarify whose decision it was to close it? Who's, who's Signet Eleven's decision to close it. We haven't closed it. We wouldn't close it. We've got no powers to close it unless there was a, a, a health and safety issue around, you know, fire safety or whatever. It's Signet Eleven's decision to close it, not ours. He literally said it was your decision, or your deal that you, he made with you? No, we knew that, uh, well, it's not our decision to close it. That, let, let, let me make this absolutely clear, absolutely clear. It's not my decision or this council's decision to close the facility. I made a deal with Joe, I shook hands with Joe, the Mayor, Mayor Anderson, and I said, on the t I, I, I accept. If you allow me to stay open until the 28th, we will close on the 28th. You're now talking to the Mayor of Liverpool, and the Mayor of Liverpool and Liverpool City Council have no responsibility for Kingsway House whatsoever. Whatsoever. If they allow me to stay open, I'll stay open. Let's put it that way. I'll stay open. The news of a sale open, just unbelievable. So it's like all our family's back together now. <laughs> so it's party time. <laughs> we cracked it. We cracked it. That's how I see it. Everybody happy! <laughs> it's Lawrence, he put his entire business, reputation, Everything on the line for these people. But look what's come from a risk. It's one of the most powerful things that's came from Liverpool in years. 
People believe now. People believe that things can change. People don't just put their heads in the sand and go, that's just how the system is. It's changed me in many ways. It's just opened my eyes to everything. It's me. I think everyone's ignorant about like the homeless and um, why people are homeless. You behind these these people sat in doorways, sleeping in doorways. It's a human being who has a heart. Younger people are coming forward and jumping on the cause. It's hope. It's a spark that's been given to Liverpool. Whoa! It's going to stay at the I don't know who or what has been pushing Kingsway House towards closure. Whatever the deal was between Lawrence and Mayor Joe Anderson, something about Kingsway House revealed tensions at the heart of austerity Britain. Who looks after the people who fall through the cracks and how? I don't think Liverpool City Council can cope with what's going on. You can't criticise this council for what we do, supporting people who are vulnerable, because we do more than any other city in the country. We spend uh, £11.7 million in, in tackling homeless. We speak different languages. Uh, they are red taped up to the eyeballs and we're not. It's a little bit like you're underneath our umbrella, we're the parents and we don't like it. Absolute rubbish. They've learned that it isn't just a question of saying open our doors and bring people in. People have got real serious issues. That facility was never going to be a permanent facility. The local paper has run a front page story with allegations of rife drug taking at Kingsway House. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. The photos have come from the council. I spent a lot of time at Kingsway House, and this did not feel quite fair. It's nowhere near as bad as what the echoes made out. Nowhere near as bad. Yes, there were addicts here, and I did meet people who chose to stay away from the shelter. But inside, I saw people taking a pride in this place and in themselves, and I saw how this helped reduce drug taking and begging. When the place first opened, we were spending our time picking up human waste. It's been unfair because I very much doubt that any politicians are picking up human waste. Yeah. You know, I never came in with a plastic halo over my head. I never thought for a minute that I was ever going to be doing this. But the fact of the matter is, when someone searches now on Google my name, the first pictures that come up are ones of drugs. I've had two or three investors saying, you know, I thought you were looking after the homeless. I thought it was a really good idea. But now I see all these pictures of drugs and, you know, what are you doing? What's going on? These people were, were drug abusers with mental health issues long before I came along. All I've done is given warmth, shelter, and food. Why would you ever? Oh, that's, I know I've said it a million times. Just for yeah. that. Yeah, I'm pissed off. I'm totally, totally pissed off. It takes a lot of effort to set up something like that. It takes a lot of effort to close it. Lawrence has decided he has to close the shelter after all to protect his business. Gradually, all the guests move out from Kingsway House, many with the help of the council. I went with Danny as the council's outreach worker, takes him to the place they found him. What more is that you get from Kingsway that you, you wouldn't get from the Whitechapel or any other establishments? In the... There's a lot more clothes in it. Did give out. A lot of love, and you felt it, you could feel it. So, I mean, I'd be dead now if it wasn't for King Wales. A million percent. Right, here's another mainstay assessment just for us to have here. Are you alright reading the writing? Yeah. Every day I've been released from releasing me almost with no as to go. Do you reckon you've broken that cycle now? I hope so. I hope so. What do you hope for the future now, man? 
I don't, I don't like, I don't like looking to the future because you plan things and they fuck up. As for Brian and David, I was told to meet them outside Lawrence's flagship luxury hotel, 30 James Street. Once again, I'm in for a surprise. I've got to say, lads, you're looking smart, you're looking very smart. Thanks very much, yeah. I'm always happy, positive. Keep thinking it's a dream. It's like a dream, I keep thinking I'm going to go David has been made operations manager. It's like walking into Buckingham Palace, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we wouldn't have been allowed, did we? Once it goes on things. That's it, the groom on that side, the bride on this side. Come on, love. The bride now, Sue. And Brian and Derek are setting up their own carpet cleaning business. Brian, do you take this woman, Derek? <laughs> I do. To have and to hold. Their first big contract, right here at Lawrence's Hotel. Which one's Brian? Hey, which one? Oh, are you Brian? Yeah. Done. It's easy to do. Yeah, you got to be. Easy now, Brian. Yeah, hold it tight, Brian. <laughs> Pelvic bone on it. Ah, oh, it's easy, Dad. <laughs> 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 just send you a car retainer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, do I? I'm only at home, man. Thank you, yeah, just working. Yeah, busy at work. This is where you're working, is it? Yeah, working, yeah. Seven days a week, get the money in. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long journey, but... Do you know what this is, mate? You know what I mean? This is powerful, man. Six months ago, me Brian was, you know, he was me seated in the doorway, not wanting to live. Look at him. Job on hands now is to get back on the streets, rally the people up for the next step of the movement. Because as much success as we've had, it's still far from over. We've 50 people out off the streets but there's still plenty of people on the streets, and this is only one city. Just right there where we can see, that's what keeps you mo motivated to continue. You've got the right to make a complaint to if you feel like you're not getting the right service from us. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you'll have no complaints, eh? No. I've got to complain about this, eh? Oh, he's a charmer. It's his own. Strange, you know, to be able to come in somewhere and say that this is mine, this is where I live. Jesus loves everyone. His love is unconditional. 